What is up guys, from Sea to Stone here, and in this episode I'll be showing you what I've found to be the best way to germinate and start autoflower seeds. In addition, I'll also be popping some photo period beans to show you how and why the two differ. So sit back, spark one up, and let's get into this week's video. Well, it's good to be back from vacation. As much as a short hiatus was needed, I've been eagerly awaiting this grow as it's stacking up to be one of my most exciting seasons yet. Before I left, I built my new grow tent, which will be home to the majority of the plants I'll be growing on this run. In addition, I will still be running my budget setup to contrast a much more advanced build. I can't stress enough how important good genetics are to a successful grow. Autos in specific have proven to be very temperamental and also unpredictable. I've tried a handful of different strains from different breeders, but I've always wanted to try Mephisto seeds. Mephisto is a breeder who specializes in specifically auto flowers. They are known for being one of the best auto breeders out there. Mephisto gave me the opportunity to be a tester on two currently unreleased strains, Hubba Bubba Haze and Pink Panama. In addition, I'll also be growing some strains bred by seeds Seed Bank, OG Kush Autos, and a high yielding CBD strain, Cream and Cheese. The OG Kush was requested for my lovely girlfriend Anna as it's her favorite strain, and the CBD Cream and Cheese is mainly being grown for my mom who was badly injured in an accident. I'd like to offer her a better alternative for pain relief instead of the long list of pharmaceutical drugs that she's currently prescribed. Let's just say that this grow hits home for me. Lastly, I'll be growing Gelato G, but these seeds are part of my Patreon only DWC grow, and I'll be starting these seeds in rock wool. So, this germination process that I'll be showing you today won't apply. To start the germination process for both the autos and the photos, I first need glasses filled with room temperature water. I've never found a need to pH this water, and I'm personally using water for my tap. Most breeders do recommend using spring water, though. I'm going to be using some gloves so the oils and germs resting on my fingertips don't interfere or compromise my delicate seeds. First things first, I place the seeds into separate glasses which I make sure to label so I can distinguish the beans once they've been removed from their breeder packs. This process essentially saturates each seed with water which in turn kickstarts the germination process. Once all the seeds have been placed in their jars, I put them in a warm room and ensure that the space stays dark at all times. The temperature I'm aiming for in this room is 75 degrees. They will remain in this state undisturbed for at least 18 hours and no more than 24. After 18 hours, it's time to check on the the seeds. Most if not all of the seeds should sink to the bottom. This indicates that they've been properly soaked with water. If they don't sink, I can give them a light tap and they should drift downwards. If they're still refusing to sink, I'll leave them in for a longer period of time. To my surprise, a good amount have already started to show their tap roots, which is a first for me. This is a great sign. The next step is an easy one. I grab a few plates and some paper towels. I've heard to use unbleached paper, but I've never had any issues using general store-bought rolls. To start, I place the paper towels flat on the plate, making sure to layer them up a few times. Next, I need to drain a good portion of the water out. I'm keeping this water because I can use it to resaturate the paper towels when they start to dry out. Also, I'm being very careful to not accidentally dump out my seeds. That would be a pain in the ass. Next, I simply dump the water directly onto the paper towels and ensure that each seed has a few inches of space between them. I don't want my paper towel sitting in a puddle of water, just enough to properly saturate and moisten each one. If there is too much water, I'll just drain a little bit of it off. After I'm done, I place the seeds back in the same space that I kept the jars in and my room temperature will still be set to 75 degrees. It's it's important that I periodically check on the seeds throughout the day. I do not want these drying out. When they do, I just use some of the tap water that I saved to resaturate the paper towels. Before we continue, I'd like to share a word about this video's sponsor, Seedsman Seed Bank, who in turn made this all possible. Seedsman is one of the most trusted and reliable online seed banks in the world, offering an incredible variety of seeds from over 100 different breeders. They run regular promotions, offer freebies to customers, and loyalty points on nearly every order, and they also offer 25% off your first Bitcoin order, which ensures anonymity when making a purchase. Not only 24 hours later, the majority of my seeds are ready to be planted. My Hubba Bubba Haze already has 1 inch tap roots, which is exactly what I'm looking for. One has even shed its outer shell, another sign that these seeds are eager and ready to be planted. 
My OG Kush Autos are ready too. Their tap roots are three quarters of an inch long and this is the bare minimum length that I would need to plant at. I'm looking to plant when the roots are three quarters to one inch long. Lastly, my CBD cream and cheese seeds are ready as well. These are photo period beans so this is where the germination process starts to differ from the auto flowering seeds. The next step for these ladies is to be placed into a small plastic container. The purpose of using a small container is it allows the plants to develop a solid root ball before being planted into their final pot. Because I can control when a photo starts flowering, I can give the plants some time to recover from the transplant shock. Now autos have a predetermined life cycle. No matter what you do, an auto flowering plant will flower by itself, usually three to five weeks. Because they finish much faster than a standard photo period, I want to introduce little to no stress to these ladies. Transplant shock can stun an auto flower, which in turn can impact the overall size and yields come harvest time. Because of this, I'll be planting my seeds directly into their final flowering pot rather than starting them in a smaller container. Similar to planting the photo periods, I make a small hole with my finger, about an inch down and very lightly cover the seedling with some medium. I'm making extra care to not pack the topsoil down which will greatly increase the rate of survival. I should mention that all of my pots have been pre-saturated with water prior to planting. This should provide your seedlings with ample water for two to three days, which gives them more time to sprout without being disturbed. If I notice my topsoil is drying out, I'll lightly water the pots. I can use a mister or a shower head watering bucket to do this. 24 hours later, my last set of seeds are finally ready to be planted as their tap roots are now long enough. I had 100% germination with all four strains that I'm starting. This makes four seasons in a row with a consistent 100% germination rate. This is due to buying proper seeds from a trusted breeder as well as the technique used to germinate them. I get told all the time that I'm creating so much extra work for myself. Why not just plant them directly into their medium? While the average cost of a pack of seeds is fairly expensive, I personally don't mind doing the extra work if it means I'll have a higher success rate. I can't say this method will definitely produce 100% germination rates, but with all my previous seasons showing the same results, I think it's safe to say that this might just be the best method for germinating cannabis seeds. The last thing that I need to do is set my humidifier in my grow tent between 65-70%. to 70%. Young seedlings need high humidity levels in order to properly sprout. If I didn't have a humidifier, I could always place plastic bottles over my seeds and on top of my medium. Not even 12 hours later, all of my seeds have popped out of the soil. They are growing strong and loving life. I've noticed the Hubba Bubba Haze in specific has been the fastest starting and sprouting strain so far, but all of the other ladies are looking just as great. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope it gave you some useful tips on how to germinate different types of seeds. I'll be hosting another LED light giveaway on my Instagram in light of reaching another major milestone. If you're not yet following my other social media accounts, the handles will be linked at the end of the video. I'd like to thank the most recent patrons who just joined up to the community and that are taking an extra step to support the channel. William C, Dylan W, Alex P, Zeus W, Keenan W, Brendan R, Scott I, Kevin F, Jared D, Johnny M, Lokesh T, Devin H, Oscar M, Tony S, Patrick C, Ivo B, Jacob G, Neil D, Travis B, Urban C, Jamie C, Brock, Timothy V, Mark C, JSR, JN, and finally Mario U. I want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. You're helping support me, my family, and strengthening the future of this channel. Kudos to all of you. And thank you to everyone else in the community as well. The fact that you show up every week, show your support in the comment section, and even just by liking the videos helps more than you could ever imagine. I'll be seeing you guys in a week for the next update on this grow. As always guys, happy growing. Thank you.